I'm very fortunate that my computer, that my um, I'm doing voice over internet protocol actually through my computer because my actual handset on my phone does not work. It's awesome. Oh. Yeah, so <laughs> the whole building had kind of went in fits and starts all this morning. So we're going to have a really short meeting hoping that we get everything in before the internet goes down again. Um, <laughs> so I'm talking really fast. Um, our, um, our agenda is to go over college progress, OER, and questions and concerns. Oh, I missed one. Um, whoa, wow, that's teeny tiny. Yeah. Um, I will fix that right now. All righty then. Let's try this size. So please share your good news. We'll start off with Diana because she's doing amazing work. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, pretty much I finished all of the credit courses um, that we were responsible for. That was a really long week that I had. <laughs> I don't know how many hours I worked in that week. Um, now we are pretty much reviewing those um, courses with our full faculty um, instructor and so far it's looking pretty good and I just have two more to send you Brenda that is 120 and 110 and then I will start um, uploading them on Skill Commons but it takes me two hours with each one. <laughs> yeah Skill Commons until you actually kind of figure it out it does take a while because you actually have to think about like getting the right occupational code with the right industry code and until you've actually built one nothing self-populates so yeah. it's just like you have to put in everything but then once you get like one or two in you can hit like you know champ and champ c and champ will come up but it takes a while yeah and it actually was um it worked pretty good for me because i actually find a lot of uh oer resources not only in english but in spanish and portuguese and because i speak all of these three languages, I could, you know, use them all. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. And um, That's really nice. the EGT and the metrology courses, I pretty much designed them myself because I'm an engineer, so I have a lot of knowledge on that too. So I was my yes, me, and my designer at the same time. <laughs> Multitasking. So yeah. that was M MTE and EGT? Yes. Okay, awesome. <clears throat> that sounds fabulous. Uh, we might actually uh, connect you with Jerry, because depending on what Jerry's working on, she, uh, she might um, like some uh, input on some of her um, when her if her faculty aren't working this summer. We, are you still working over the summer, Diana? Yeah, my contract is until September 16th. <laughs> okay, good. So then we we might be able to <clears throat> connect you and Jerry, and you might be able to bounce ideas off each other since you actually are an SME. Okay. That would be awesome. And I just offered her to you, Jerry, whether she asked it for it or not. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and go with Jerry's good news. Jerry has lots of good news. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, we turned over course maps for our welding fast track program along with the content that we've used for the last two um, course releases, so we've run that course a couple of times. We released the course maps to that, um, but the course maps include some redesign that we're including in the new courses moving forward. Um, so we have our welding 140 stuff out there. We turned over the, the course map for MAC 250. We actually delivered that course this semester, and that course went really well. The, the instructor was really happy with the um, with the outcome of that course. Um, and we actually sat down and went to an evaluation on that course too, so we'll update the map a little bit, but that course is pretty much good to go. Um, we're working on, I'll, I'll be able to turn over our ELT, three of our ELT maps um, by tomorrow. And we have, gosh, I can't remember what our fourth map was. Oh, um, is it MTE 238? which is our hydraulic site. Let me see. Mechanical MT. 
Yes, 238. MT 238. So that one will go over too. So little by little, we're getting stuff done. Awesome. Um, I had actually wanted, I had had a conversation with uh, Jerry Hanley at the um, EC4 online, the o, uh, online learning consortiums conference in, back in uh, middle, last part of April. Um, and he, I was telling him about your welding videos. And he said that he would like to see them um, so he can actually profile them. So if you have, a, if you can uh, quickly have Roger Wolf um, actually say, okay, I, I would like him to showcase this, this video and this video as something that's innovative that actually came out of your project, um, send those URLs to me so I can forward them on. Uh, Jerry Hanley from Cal State is the one who actually put together the Skills Commons repository. So he's wanting to profile um, Colorado colleges, um, the CHAMP grants, uh, not only innovation, but spectacular course designs. So, um, Diana, do you, so I need that for um, Pike's T, uh, Pueblo's welding courses because that was something innovative that no one else has done. Um, okay. And then I was wondering uh, if Diana wanted to, um, since you actually created the MTE 130 and EGT 205, mm -hmm. um, I, when I look at them, I haven't uploaded them to um, D12. Um, I'll have to upload them into detail because I would like to profile one of, one of those. You tell me which one you'd like to profile. Um, I, don't, I don't care. MTE, I guess. Mm. You can send me an email with it. So look at the courses again, and, and that's the one that, that they will actually show showcase as saying this is a this is not only a great design, but it shows some type of. Um, different way to teach it or different content or something, uh, good use of technology, something like that. So that's it. Um, and it looks um, like... Does that have what? to be between those two courses? Because um, I will actually go for the CNC courses because those are pretty good. I designed them with Larry Har Harman. I don't know if you know him. Oh, Larry's awesome. Yeah, yeah Larry's so awesome. I, I designed those two with Larry Harman and uh, they are really, really good. So why don't you get with Larry and decide which course that you want to highlight okay. and then send, send me an email with it. Okay. And yeah, it doesn't have to be the day. Yeah, it can be, like I told him I would get back to him by the second week in um, May, so that's like the end of next week. Okay, yeah, um, our blueprint course is really good too also. Okay, cool, cool. Um, and that's it. And then Donna, are you still on the line? I don't think she has an access to it. Let's see. Hey, Donna. Hey there. How are you? Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> Sorry, I tried you... to call you on the computer and then it didn't want to play, so then I called in. But yeah, I have just a couple of minutes before I have to go to my other meeting. Okay. So, so um, give us a good news. Yeah, well, you know, it's better news than it has been, but we are wrapping up um, the blog, what, what I, I think I've called this to you guys before, our blog course, which is the, the course that Joe currently teaches as sort of a combined course. It's the EGT 205, MAC 250, and MAC 102. So we're wrapping that up um, so it will be available for anybody who might be interested in, in delivery, that, that delivery method. Um, we've got 210, which is the Swiss programming class, uh, pretty much wrapped up except for activities. I have to meet with that instructor this afternoon to do the 211 piece. 267, which is the advanced inspection, or 266, which is the advanced inspection class. I have most of the content for that, um, one unit left to plug in. And then I have content for 267 from what I understand. I just haven't had a chance to look at it yet. So. Sometime in this next century, I'll have all of that stuff out there online. Awesome. Um, have you actually gotten any feedback from when you actually submitted these courses? Because remember back in December, there was an issue of the numbers. Have you actually gotten confirmation that they were voted on on the May, or they're going to be voted on in the May 
um, meeting, or is it going to wait until August? 2010 to 11 were approved. 266 and 267 were approved as far as the numbers, but they will be going back in front of SFCC tomorrow because they were a little concerned about the course um, outcomes. So we revised those and those were resubmitted, so we're on the agenda for tomorrow again. Okay, awesome. That's super. Cool beans. So, yay. Yeah. Um, the only other thing on our um, actual college progress is just please touch base with Red Rocks and Front Range, touch base with your faculty about what they should be saying about the courses affected by grant funds. Mm -hmm. um, they have to actually, if they're ever approached, they have to actually say, oh, yes, we're working on the, uh, the you know, course content. It seems to be going well. You know, it's benefited my students. Whatever you want the, their key point to be made, just make sure that they are, if they're approached, they can actually say something that how the uh, course was touched by grant funds. Okay. Mm. Fortunately for us, that will be easy because there's only one instructor, Diana. That will be a much a more difficult task for you probably. But <laughs> yeah, I have like seven instructors working on yeah. curriculum. Yeah. Well, you know they're going to visit on Monday and yeah, on Friday. So Monday and Friday are the days that they're actually going to be on your campus. Yeah, so whoever I'm teaches here, on Monday. I'm going to be here on Monday. I'm not going to be here on Friday because it's my son's surgery. So. Oh, I'm sorry <laughs> to hear that. Yeah, well, and I'm getting prepared psychologically for that. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, whoever teaches on Monday, make mm -hmm. sure that they – um, they actually have something to say. And I'm sure Ruth is already preparing them as well, so. Yeah, we have been having meetings pretty much every week to prepare all of us, all of, you know, faculty and the staff for that, okay. for that visit from the DOL, yeah. Awesome. Um, our next that topic is. Bug out, Brenda, sorry. I don't remember. I think I have short-term memory loss, Donna. <laughs> No, no, I said I've got to go ahead and bug out, so I'll go to my other meeting. So, oh, I do you mean. I'm sorry. I barely do you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Talk All to right. you soon, guys. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Thanks. Um, uh, our CHAMP um, website is coming along amazingly well. Thanks for sending over the OER uh Courses, um, if my computer would respond, I would be able to actually show you how well. I don't, I know you guys have your head down kind of like me and you're just like furiously trying to get stuff done. Um, but I am, if you send me an OER um, URL, it does actually go up on um, our website mm -hmm. and it's getting, um, that, this is one of the things we're actually going to send over to Cal State or um, the W, the Skills Commons, is that we have all of our courses starting to be populated. Um, engineering graphics has the most. Machining's not so much. Um, welding is totally completed except for um, the 141s and 142s, which um, Pete can go into in just a minute. Um, and the pre-manufacturing is very close to being done. So it's a good way to actually, when you actually have a site visit, if they start asking you about your courses, this is always a good place to say, oh, we have OER links for all of our courses in the consortium, and you can point them to this page, and it easily distracts them from asking, from actually getting the answer they, you think they're going to ask for. So you can always point to this page saying, oh, yeah, here's, here's some of our materials now. This is where it is. It has active links. It's in Skills Commons. You know, we're working really hard about it. We're uploading stuff. We're putting revisions in there. Um, so it's always a good thing to show them so that, that they're dazzled by the fact that we're doing really great things um, and they're not asking too many details. Um, I was going to ask Pete to... Please ta uh, share with the group about um, the welding 141 and one, I don't know, whatever, 144 and 142, and the fact that they probably, you give me the status and when you think you can get them into OER. There. 
<laughs> well, right now we just uh, are reorganizing those courses so that way they'll um, transfer e uh, more easily into other LMS systems. And so as that's going in, we have 141, 142, and 144, and Mac 250 have been replaced in the TAC drive. So if you're, you need content from those, you can go ahead and download them, and, they actually, and they'll load up into your system, and you'll be able to get access to all the files and see how the class is organized. Um, I'll be, 143 should be done by the end of the day tomorrow, so that one will be available as well. And then it'll really be going back to Jared to give the final go ahead on publishing out to OER. They, they would be ready, but I really want Jared to um, go through that process and then we'll get publishing them out like everyone else has been doing. Awesome. Um, that's fabulous. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> yes, Pete is the bottom of the hill guy and he just had a mount. Uh, he had a mountain dumped on him, so he, he he's struggling to the top after I've dumped mountains on him. Um, <laughs> I laughed, but it really wasn't funny for the last week. <laughs> no, it hasn't been funny. <laughs> he told me he had a fire in his belly, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. This is like so motivating, right? And he goes, it's not that kind of fire. <laughs> And I thought he was doing real, it was really awesome, but he didn't seem to think so. Um, <laughs> camp program activities, I was to remind you that um, for instructional designers, the last time you can actually touch a course for revisions or anything associated with tweaking a course, creating a new course, is September 30th, 2016. So you have... Um, You have 15 months left um, to make revisions, make new content. Um, now that you have your courses kind of established, like Pete was saying, well, we have the welding courses. Well, if, you know, in spring 2016, your instructor develops an awesome video or a test or anything like that, you can still work on that with them and upload it to OER. But as of September 30th, 2016, you cannot do anything except upload stuff to OER. So if your contract actually ends September 2016, you need to have all of your OER published by 2000, uh, that September 2016. Anybody whose contract runs through uh, September 2017 can still publish uh, stuff through 2017. Does that make sense? So we'll have a year What? Theoretically, you do. Theoretically, you do have a year. Um, and the only reason they're cutting that off, um, in TAC 1 and TAC 2, we really didn't have that fourth year. Um, but the, the, what they're doing is they're saying that because of the way everything runs, the last um, day you can count students is, um, I think it's through summer 2017, and they want all programs to be active a year before that. Um, so that's the limit now that's on there. What about for the non-credit programs? Non-credit programs have to stop by March 31st, 2017. Okay. So you're still under the same guidelines. After um, um, September 2016, so on October 1st, 2016, you as an instructional designer cannot create, modify, or revise any of the courses touched by grant funds. Okay, so what do you mean with uh, the non-credit program have to stop by March 31st? The project leads were, um, um, program activities are instruction, content development, program navigators after March 31st, 2017. Okay. So it's not like you could do a summer non-credit summer 2017 summer course. 
non-credit course. You, you can offer it, but it can't be touched by grant funds, and it okay. can't be counted as grant funds. Okay. But Ruth will have that information. She was told this uh, both in an email, a posting on Basecamp, and then again at the leads meeting um, this month. Okay. Um, yeah, so all between September 2016, so it's basically September, October 1st, 2016 through September 30th, 2017. We can publish to OER, um, but no work with faculty and we should not be developing content. But you, you remember you still have, at your colleges, you still have other OER to actually publish. You have brochures, you have navigator stuff, you have any other content that like spreadsheets, anything like that can go, can be published to OER during that year. Okay. Um, so that's that. Uh, and that's all I have. They're, all I have is time for questions. Does anybody have any questions? No. <laughs> okay, awesome. Please don't hesitate to call Peter I if you have questions or concerns or you need help doing something. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of um, shuffling courses around um, because you're going to find something really works well on your campus or it doesn't work well and you can call me and say, okay, somebody doesn't like what, what this course is. Jerry's actually going through that process as she builds it, um, but some of the courses we built for Pikes Peak they built it first and they're in the process of revising it. So they have like needs for certain things. Like I put out on Basecamp that if you have a Mac 201, 202 course, if you know a faculty member, even if it's not a CHAMP affected course, that has course material for Mac 202, please send it to me so I can actually forward it on to an instructor who needs that for a CHAMP course. Does that make sense? Okay. Brenda, and I just all haven't been able to sit down and, and confirm anything with that instructor. Okay, so I'll go that. ahead and. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll make a direct contact with, with um, Cal uh, Roberts from Pikes Peak and see what he can send me. And that might actually help you out on that. Because okay. I know he's doing CNC. I know he's all doing right. CNC. Uh, well, back to. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's say that again, Jerry. Um yeah, that's that's what we're having trouble with is that too. Okay. Um so Diana, if is there anybody on your campus that's teaching a Mac two oh two, a CMC, is it turning or operations, Jerry? It is, um, it is turning. Okay. We are teaching 201. No. We're teaching 201 that is intro to CNC turning operations. Right. So it's got to be oh. something else. But so we're Diana, not teaching 202. Yeah, so we used your 201 maps, Diana, to kind of get us set up for 202. Yeah, I can send it to you. And it's so actually, we, so, I think it's in the text. Yeah, we have it. And, okay. and we've looked at it, and the instructor was, he, he liked what he saw, and we were using that drill tool, so now it's just getting up into commit to sit down and get 202 built. Okay. So, Diana, do you have that instructor that helped you with 201? He's um, Larry. So, could you ask him if he has any material for 202? Yeah, I can ask him. Um, I don't, honestly, I don't think he has it at this spot because he kind of develops as he needed. But I can ask him, but you know that he was out for, you know, open heart surgery for a long time. <laughs> right, right, he was. Um, but yeah, ask him if he has any, because even if it's paper files, okay. we can scan it in and send it to Jerry. Okay, I can ask him. Because right now she has nothing. And okay. <laughs> and she needs to get that, that course actually created by, that's going to be second semester fall 15, right, Jerry? Right. Oh, no, second half of fall 15. So that's going to start in October, right? October. Right. <laughs> so she has yeah. nothing, so we actually have to build her a course. Okay. So yeah, I can ask, ask him. 
<laughs> awesome. We'd appreciate that. Okay. Thanks, Diana. No problem. Do we have any other questions? No. I'm All okay. right. Sounds good. Then I'm going to go ahead and um, close out the meeting. If rem Remember, if you need anything, just let us know. Um, and then we're here to help you. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.